In this video, I will discuss chapter three of E. H. Gombrich's A Little History of the World. Chapter three is called The Land by the Nile, and it discusses the history of ancient Egypt. Now, ancient Egypt is the longest surviving civilization ever. It lasted for 3,000 years, and so no other civilization lasted as long as that, or no, no civilization has as of yet lasted so long. And its beginnings are also the beginnings of recorded history. It started in around 3100 BC, so just over 5000 years ago, with a king called Menes. Other significant dates which come up in the chapter are the dates of the reigns of King Cheops in 2500 BC. He's a man, he's a, he was one of the pharaohs, one of the kings of Egypt, who were, who were the absolute rulers. They, everybody followed them, followed their words. Everybody essentially was a slave to their rule. Cheops built himself a great pyramid to house his tomb called the Great Pyramid of Cheops, and that is still in existence. You can go see it today. Then we've also got King Akhenaten, who lived in 1370 BC. He was a king who was quite revolutionary. He didn't believe in all the different Egyptian gods that were going around, such as Osiris and Isis, the consort of Osiris, and Anubis, who was the son of the sun god, uh, Amon, and all, all the other ones. He only believed in the, the, in the sun god, Amon, and he said that there is only one god, that's Amon, we should only worship him, we should disregard the others. He then shut down the temples, he moved into a new palace and decorated it in a new style and said, I've got no time for tradition, forget all that, we're doing things a new way. That happened, but as soon as he died, the Egyptians, being very traditional people, returned back to the same traditions that they'd followed before King Akhenaten's reign. That said, I want to emphasise how traditional the Egyptians were. As Gomrich describes it, he says that the priestly class, which were the, the, the people who actually held all the traditions, who who uh, discussed all the religious aspects, who held all the uh, sacred texts texts, and passed them down from generation to generation. Gombrich says that no son of a priest would do anything that his father did not do. So the tradition was passed down from generation to generation, and perhaps that's one of the keys to why Egyptian civilization was able to last for so long, for 3,000 years, because they had a way of doing things, they had a tradition which worked for them, and they continued it for uh, do, doing that, and they didn't change anything. Talking about the gods, one of the gods that they worshipped was the Nile itself, because the Nile runs throughout the entire length of Egypt, from one side of the country to the other side of the country, and it has a special property, which is that twice a year it floods, it bursts its banks, and it floods the entire area surrounding the Nile. And though this is quite inconvenient for, for people, given that they have to get around on boats during the, the time when it's flooded, actually it's a wonderful thing because it fertilizes all the surrounding soil, which means that the lands are extremely fertile, which is a reason why uh, Egypt has been known as the breadbasket of Europe, or why it was so valuable, say, to the Romans or even to Napoleon, because it was such a great source of food as a result of the fertility which the Nile flooding provided it. So they worshipped the, the Nile. Now, other things that E. H. Gombrich talks about in this chapter are the fact that uh, there's so many rituals regarding death, bodies need to be preserved, and they're preserved. Uh, by rubbing ointments and plant oils and covering the bodies with strips uh, to create what's known as mummies, which many people know about, and then preserving those in coffins and then in tombs. And he talks about the fact that the tombs were decorated with wall paintings, which actually give us a good idea as to what the Egyptians were up to in their day-to-day -day life, because they depict things like catching ducks or irrigating fields, and they're also covered in hieroglyphs, which means sacred signs in Greeks, which were, uh, which tell us a lot about Egyptian life because we were able to decipher them using the Rosetta Stone, which is in the British Museum. 